everybody and welcome to today's video and in today's video I'll be discussing why the state of Ohio isn't quite shifting to the right and why the Democrats actually may um, end up shifting it to the right. Now, it is generally agreed upon that Ohio is shifting to the right and I more or less agree with that. Um, I think that there's definitely a but into that um, or a... I guess, but uh, assuming it's it's shifting to the right, but there are it's there it's it's not quite shifting to the right, but it's it's appeared that it has in recent years, um, and there are reasons for it. So I wouldn't say that it is shifting to the right, but I would say that it will probably move rightward, not necessarily due to a demographic change in the state, or due to specific demographics shifting to the left. In fact, if or shifting to the right. In fact, if it weren't for the big main reason I actually think it would shift to the left due to, um, or maybe say similar, but mainly shift to the left due to the suburbs shifting to the left. Though we could see um, urban turnout dropping, where suburban, like urban turnout being less, um, as we see more and more voters leave a lot of these bigger cities in Ohio, and suburban turnout, sh or suburban voters shifting enough to the left, though, that it kind of balances it out. But, um, if, if you really look at it, it's not quite shifting to the right due to major demographic swings or changes in turnout. A big part of it is um, actually shifts within the parties. So, or mainly a shift within the Republican Party and how the Democrats, and this is essentially discussing how the Democrats could really hurt themselves and actually lose Ohio, um, basically voluntarily, um, due to the GOP adapting and the Democratic Party not. So looking at Ohio in 2020, Trump carried it by 8.1%, and then he carried it by a fairly similar margin in 2016. Um, oh, actually, exactly the same, 8.1%. Um, I think on Jackson Jude, it had shifting like 0.1% to the left or something. Um, but as you can see, fairly similar map. In fact, if we go look at the shift from... 2016, we see a lot of the rural areas shifting heavily to the right, whereas a lot of these bigger cities in their suburbs shifting to the left. Um, Lucas County shifted to the right, and so did Cuyahoga, which I actually find kind of interesting. But Mahoning, for example, is one that um, is it, it's kind of interesting. I, I'm not even certain. Trump actually carried Mahoning, which is interesting that he would carry it against Biden and not against Clinton. But um, I just I apologize about that. But looking at 2016, once again, fairly similar margin. In 2008, however, Barack Obama carried the state. He carried it by almost 3%, 2.9%. And then, um, if we look over here, if we go look at Wikipedia, um, which I'm thinking I was going to use, if we round up, um, Obama carried it by, what, doing quick math, um, I think 4.2%. Um, what, no, 4.6%. How did I get 4.2? What? Okay, no, um, that was not 4.2%. I'm not even certain. My math is not going quickly. Um, but generally, yeah, like 4.2%, or 4.6%, jeez. Um, but I, I do, um, I think that there's a big reason for this. And yes, I, I think actually if we look at these elections and we look at the candidates, we actually see almost a sw like a switch in terms of where they stood, in terms of major appeal, and a lot of this t tends to be not necessarily whether they're farther to the left or right, or farther to, like, the extremes in their parties. Um, rather, it's it's more of how populist versus establishmentarian they are, um, which is, it's, it's kind of interesting, but looking at, um, and typically this actually does, those two do kind of, um, coincide, because typically moderates tend to be more establishmentarian, whereas people further to their side of the aisle tend to be populist. Um, not necessarily always the case. Um, for example, Joe Manchin is more or less populist than he is, um, possibly more conservative than some Republicans in the Senate. Um, but generally speaking, it's fairly true. But Obama, um, I feel like he was a bit of an exception, but, um, because he was, he was definitely very populist. He wasn't or he, I feel, I actually find it very similar to Biden in the sense that he doesn't seem terribly progressive, but 
a lot of his policies are actually more progressive than one would think. Um, but regardless, looking at these, this was more or less, McCain was this moderate establishment figure, um, whereas Obama was more of a, a populist um, who has lots of appeal to the working class. Um, however, and then it's a very similar thing in 2012. 2016, it was a complete swap. The Democratic Party did not have Barack Obama anymore. Um, without Barack Obama, honestly, they see they seem fairly incompetent when it comes to nominating candidates. Um, the last, I mean, like Al Gore almost won in what 2000, 2000, just 2000. Um, honestly, there's there's speculation that he should have won. Um, but I mean. We we they they tend to we tend to see them nominating um nominating establishmentary moderates. Clinton was just an exceptionally awful candidate. She wasn't only an establishmentary moderate, she was an establishmentary progressive, which is like just an awful type of candidate to run. It made no sense. Because establishmentary and moderate Democrats, generally speaking, tend to have fairly decent appeal in the suburbs, fairly decent appeal to black voters, hardly any appeal um, to rural voters, and hardly any appeal to the white working class. Progressive um, Democrats tend to be more or less the opposite. They tend to, I would think, have more appeal to rural voters, but rural voters don't necessarily matter to the Democratic Party because they're going to lose the rural vote and probably lose it big regardless. They're probably going to struggle with black voters. They're struggling in the suburbs, so they're going to do very well with the um, working class. Obama was kind of an exceptional candidate. He was almost the opposite of Clinton. And since that Clinton had little to no appeal in the suburbs, she had little to no appeal anywhere. Whereas Obama had pretty good appeal in almost every, within their, almost every demographic. Um, but I, I think this was really just a, a, a really dumb move to nominate somebody like Clinton. And what we, what we see is we see somebody like Trump who has loads of working class appeal against somebody like Clinton with basically no working class appeal and it's 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 a bloodbath in a state like Ohio. Trump is turning out loads and loads of rural voters. Um he is turning out he's doing phenomenally with the working class. He's a terrible suburban candidate, but Clinton is as well. They're just both awful in the suburbs. But Clinton is doing awful with the working class. She is struggling to turn out black voters. It's just an awful showing for her. Biden, I think, would have actually done a lot better, um, if it weren't for Trump's, if it weren't for Trump doing so well with the working class and so well with rural voters, um, like we see in Dayton and Columbus, he shifts it, um, to the left, he did, he shift Delaware County by nine points, um, I mean, it's gonna flip eventually, it, it's very possible that if the Democrats run a good enough suburban candidate that it shift, that it flips by 2024, but, um, we we see Biden. I I think if this were Trump's first run, I think if I think if Biden were the nominee in two thousand sixteen, he very well could have carried Ohio. Um, because I think he has so much more working class appeal than Trump. But I think that by twenty twenty, Trump is turning out so many rural voters. He has so much rural appeal after a four year or almost four years, I guess, by that point, um, presidency. That he he just does very very well with the rural vote. Um, he's doing very well with the working class, and it kind of it, it's kind of um problematic for Biden. But I think he would have actually probably done better. But I I still think that at this point it's it's going to really hurt the Democratic Party, especially with this populist Trump wing of the GOP taking over. Whereas the Democratic Party, um, they they seem to still be a very moderate establishmentarian party, which is going to really hurt them because. They are going to struggle um, a lot with the working class, and they're going to likely get destroyed in the rural areas when the GOP nominates somebody very Trump-like. Because with somebody Trump-like, if the if the um, Democratic Party were to nominate somebody with a progressive with working class appeal, I, I tend to think that once again, progressives are going to really struggle, generally speaking, to turn out black voters and really struggle in the suburbs. They're going to do very well with the working class, and I actually see a lot of progressives, um, doing very well with, like, rural farmers, which is where they could do very, very well in rural Ohio, but they are, um, 
or at least um, the, De the Democratic Party doesn't seem to like to nominate them. And in a state like Ohio, it's going to really hurt them. Whereas in a state like Georgia, it, it's going to help them because they're going to turn out loads of black voters. And um, in Atlanta, they're going to do very well in the suburbs of Atlanta. Um, they are going to do. Um, they're they're going to really struggle with white rural voters. So they're going to they're going to do very well, I think, with whatever small share of the electorate of white voters there still are in the Atlanta suburbs, um, which will or probably do decent at least, which will help them. Um, in a state like in a state like Georgia, however. In, in a state like Ohio, they are going to do really bad. And I, the GOP, at this point, has taken to shifting typical battlegrounds. The Rust Belt, essentially, um, or the Rust Belt particularly. The, the Rust Belt, essentially, is like their, is, is, is essentially the biggest that I'm, that I'm looking at. Um, you could argue Nevada, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't really throw that in there. And you could argue maybe Maine second, but it, it, it's not part of the Rust Belt, but it tends to vote, like, or recently it's voted like, Ohio and Iowa, um, but, regardless, um, in, in a state, or the GOP, essentially, have seen that these states are shifting away from them, and they have basically just given up on them, um, they, they have, they've, they've basically, in a state like Georgia, they've, they've essentially just, in 2020, I feel like a lot of it was relying on hoping that Trump's rural turnout would be able to, um, push him over the finish line in a state like Arizona. I guess they were hoping that enough traditional conservatives would split for Trump. Um but they're they're essentially focusing on key battleground regions that they know that the Democratic Party is gonna nominate horrible candidates for and they're shifting them to the left. So to to summarize, I don't think that Ohio is necessarily shifting to the left. I think that the GOP is nominating phenomenal candidates for the working class. But as the GOP kinda turns into this um, party that's going to continue to nominate Trump as populist, whereas the Democratic Party continues to nominate um, moderate establishmentarians. We're going to see states like Ohio become harder and harder for Democrats to win. Um, and once again, I don't think that this is like a big demographic thing. I think that there, um, I, I think that it's it's not. I, I think Ohio probably would stay very similar if the GOP weren't doing worse in the suburbs. I would say it's actually shifting to the right. Um, regardless, but given this, I do think it's sh shifting to the right where states like Georgia, um, and states like Arizona are shifting to the left. Um, by the way, Nevada and Arizona, or Nevada and Florida aren't really shifting. Florida, Trump did phenomenally with Hispanic Latino voters. It was not necessarily expected, and it's probably not going to happen again in the presidential election. Um, it's not really shifting to the right. I don't really need to make a whole video on that. It's, Florida's going to be like a right... Florida's going to be like an R plus one and a half, R plus two swing state for years to come. Um, that's how it's going to be for a probably a very long time. Um, but regardless, once again, I, I think this kind of applies to the entire Rust Belt, but Ohio in particular. Um, so, n is it shifting to the right with major demographic swings? No. Is it going to continue to vote for the Republican Party and probably by fairly large margins? Yes. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of a video in Ohio. Um, it's, it's definitely different from what I typically do. Um, but regardless, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like below. Stay tuned for my next video, um, tomorrow. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please comment your suggestions down below, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!